Live streaming. You want it, I got it. Here it is. <laughs> live streaming. We have all had those questions in our mailboxes from these incoming brides and grooms saying, hey, do you do live streaming? Do you live streaming? Luckily for us with this coronavirus crisis, we've been able to actually do a really good income on live streaming. Um, and I thought I should probably talk to everybody about this. This rig right here that you saw me roll in here and set up in under a minute is about a $1,600 rig. It's all hooked up internally and all you got to do plug stuff into the back of this. So I want to show you how this rig is made. I'm pretty proud of it and I'm really happy with how it's worked for us. I wanted to find a rack that had a table on the top so we could use a laptop as well as um, enough rack spaces so that I could hide a display in there. We have a small little display. Um, I also wanted it to be deep enough so I could have stuff in the front of the rack that we are using, such as this power and this um, rack panel with all our inputs in it, as well as outputs. And then I knew I wanted to be able to pull a full-size rack shelf out of the front so I could put my ATEM Mini on it and a couple other things. So I was looking at that and I found this incredible unit by SKB, the 4RU Studio Flyer. You're talking around like 350 bucks and I think it's totally worth it. Um, as you can see, when we rolled it in, it rolls in real easy. It's got an awesome handle on it. I mean, this thing is incredible. I wish I would have found it sooner because we probably would have been using it for other things. But we're using it for our live streaming rig and we are loving it. The ATEM Mini Pro is a really incredible piece of hardware. The ATEM Mini Pro is an all-in-one and it's really, really powerful, incredible. There's never really been anything like it to this level of quality. The Pro has a couple awesome features over the normal ATEM, um, one of them being that it has multi-view, which is really, really important. And that's what right here you'll see we have our preview and our program view and all the different camera angles as well as you can actually monitor your stream health if you're using the ATEM Mini to stream and your recording if you're using your ATEM Mini to record on a USB-C drive such as this Samsung T5 and you got all your channels of audio right here and so it's got everything in there it's a built-in mini streaming studio we love the ATEM Mini Pro and I couldn't recommend it enough One of the things I keep finding with live streaming is like, I'm literally the only guy in the studio who knows how to set it up. So I said, the only way I'm willing to get into live streaming for our company is if I can make it so that the person opens up the rack and all their inputs are right there and they don't need to undo anything, take anything apart. And so this is, I think, the part of the video that's gonna be the most helpful for you. There's a company called Redco. Um, and they make custom rack panels. A lot of it's actually for um, networking and things like this. Um, and we're gonna put the link down there and you can just go onto this company and you can order a custom rack panel with all the ins and outs that you want. First, we have four HDMI inputs. I also went with four combo inputs. These are XLR and quarter inch input combo inputs because I know DJs have a range of different things going on. I went ahead and got an audio out. It's a mono feed, it's not stereo, it's not perfect, but it's definitely better than nothing and it will sound pretty good and it's really easy. It just makes it way more convenient. We have an ethernet input because we, to the very best of our ability, really try to be doing these live streams via ethernet. It's just the most reliable. And then of course we added in a IEC cable input so we can power everything. It's all hooked up on the inside um, via this power bar rack USB, which is a very cheap, affordable um, power conditioner. One of the things I like about this one it has a USB input, which is pretty handy. Power your phone, charge your phone. And also a lot of um, gear nowadays is actually powered via USB. Um, and I also like that it has this always on AC out for just in case you need to charge batteries. You have power available to you right on the back of this rig. So I wanted to take a little bit of a break in telling you through the rig and talk about one of the philosophies that you're gonna to wanna to think about when you're setting up your live stream rig, which is gonna be, how do I want to handle program audio? 
You might have multiple input streams. Um, do you want to be recording at the same time? There's a lot of decisions to make. So after thinking about how we wanted to do our audio, we decided to go with a very simple single rack space mixer. And we wanted it to have mic and line level inputs because that's very important in controlling your gain structure. It doesn't have to have a bunch of bells and whistles. We decided to go with the Denon 312X. It's 12 channels and it's just very, very simple, very clean. And like I said, one rack space, which is really important to me, and it's only $200. One more thing about audio. Make sure you watch your levels whenever you're doing this stuff. You got a lot of gain structure going on there. So you really wanna be very cognizant of all your different settings and making sure you're not streaming too hot of a signal. And don't forget this, you need to check your meters on your streaming platform and make sure it's not peaking out there as well. So this is where we're gonna get into some nerdy stuff and there are things that I'm just like, I know this exists. So I'll be searching the internet, searching the internet. And one of the things that I knew existed and I'd seen it was a retractable rack shelf. Um, I'd seen them in like server rooms and things like that. And I was like, I know I could use one of these to put my AFIT Mini on and to put my uh, multi-view screen on. And so I found a $50 retractable rack shelf. I got one that was vented because I wanted it to be cool on the bottom. This one works for me. Um, I got it from some weird website and it's been great and it's awesome. Having a good size screen is one of the most important things I would stress when it comes to doing more complex live streaming setups. Anywhere from three to four cameras, I really think you should have a good size screen. The one that I decided to go with was a brand I'm pretty familiar with that's pretty decent. It's MSI. This is a 1080, it's about a 16 inch screen, maybe 15.6. HDMI, mini HDMI, and it's powered via USB-C, so it's perfect for this rig. And best of all, it fits right into the rack. And actually, you can just close it up, retract your shelf, and you're good to go. After you invest in your monitor, you're gonna need something to put it on. I, I really wanted something that was very sturdy um, and also cheap. So I just got on this, this Amazon special. It's called Beezine. Really cool name, the Beezine tablet rack mount. And this thing, it just folds down. I can slide it right in, put it right away. Um, but make sure you get something to put your screen on because you don't want to go there with a 15 inch monitor and have it fall off your rack and get smashed underground. First thing you're gonna need to decide is what kind of cables do I need to bring? Here's my recommendation. At least get 200 feet of ethernet cable and just bring it with you. Ethernet is reliable and it almost always works. The thing about 200 feet of ethernet cable is it's a mess. Just invest in like a $50 cable spool like this It'll be easy, fast, and best of all, you won't look like a joke when you roll up to this awesome live streaming gig that you got. The other decision you're gonna have to make is how do I wanna get my signal from my camera to my live streaming rig? HDMI used to be a very unreliable cable. It's very high latency, and oftentimes you'll see people say, oh, don't run an HDMI more than 20 feet. I have found that this is not the case. If you invest in good cables that are designed to do it, you can run a cable. We have a 100 foot HDMI that looks perfectly fine and runs very well. Um, the key is you just need to make sure that it's rated for the length you wanna run it. Just kinda keep in mind is oftentimes HDMI cables are actually directional, which is not something that I knew about when I was first plugging these things in. So we're plugging in 100 feet of cable the wrong direction. It was a real pain, you don't wanna do it. Many of the cable spools that you buy will not work for HDMI because HDMI has very, very fat heads to it. So I went and got these $5 things from Amazon. They're just a cable winder. It's just got giant big holes on the side so you can pretty much run any cable you want out of it. Um, just like I said, the key is it is directional. So you need to make sure you plug it in the right way the first time. Instead of investing in these little stupid adapters that plug into your camera and constantly break, I just was like, I'm just gonna get a really high quality coupler because it makes it a lot easier to take a mini HDMI to full-size HDMI cable, a 10-footer or something like that, convert it to full-size HDMI, and then plug it into my 100-foot cable. This thing has worked. Have a couple of these in your live streaming rig. It will make your life easier, I promise you. One of the things about live streaming is that sometimes you don't have power and you don't have internet. So I found a couple things that might help you. You don't have to do this stuff, but this is something that we have done in the past. First thing, this thing is incredible. Everyone should own one of these. And it is a P-tap, D-tap, whatever you want to call it. Honestly, I don't know the difference. Um, converter to AC power. So this thing is great because we can just plug it into something like this 98 V-mount battery and just 
run this whole rig. This rig will run for about an hour on one V-mount battery. If you want to get like a hot swappable dual V-mount rack, you can probably run this thing in perpetuity with V-mount batteries. And I think that's really cool. In terms of streaming remotely, there's a lot of options out there. The most professional way, the most reliable way to do it is something called cellular bonding. These solutions are incredible. They're gonna be taking multiple cell signals, combining them into one, swapping back and forth between the strongest. It'll also combine Wi-Fi and ethernet to get you the best possible live streaming connection. The problem is, this is expensive. There's a lot of solutions out there and you're talking $2,000 just to get started oftentimes. They have subscriptions sometimes. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. If you're making good money and you're finding yourself in remote situations often, I think it's a good investment. But most of us are gonna end up arriving at something like this. So a 5G hotspot like this one, um, our service right here is Verizon. But this in Seago 5G, Wi-Fi hotspot that we're using Verizon for has been awesome for us and it's worked great. Hopefully you found that video helpful. If you want to check out other videos, we do some tutorials and of course we have our podcast where we talk about what it means to be a wedding professional. New episodes coming soon. Check us out on Wedding Pros. Subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to us. Definitely hit that like button and really tell your friends that you found a video that was helpful to you. Have an awesome day guys. Go out there and make some money.